All right, and we would just continue that process. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate, notice that, you know, it's getting clean. We still got some tissue here. We still gotta watch, wash and rinse this skin and make sure we got it off. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate another fleshing board technique. And take that hide, just like we stretched it over, over the, the ball, but this time, we're gonna stretch it over this flesh and beam, right? And I've got a, a flix, fixed blade knife here. I'm not sure if this is sharp enough. I think this is gonna need a sharpening, but we're gonna use it to demonstrate the best that we can, right? So again, I'm pulling this tight and I'm just down kind of at an angle, kind of pulling, pushing and pulling at the same time to kind of get that cut going. This this blade's a little bit too dull. So let's demonstrate with my scalpel here, right? So same process, but we're just using the flat beam instead of that little round ball. And we're gonna work all of this muscle and connective tissue and fat down. Notice the angle of my blade, so I'm not cutting into the hide. It's almost as if the blade was flat, and this just takes a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error, but, and, and you definitely want a sharp blade, but once you find that angle, this works pretty dang good. And there are lots of videos on YouTube demonstrating like a full-sized fleshing beam uh, with a nice double-handled fleshing knife um, this is just sort of a miniature version of that. And I just made this with some scrap wood that was laying in my backyard. Just made a base and uh, made the, the fleshing beam portion and carved it down to be able to fit, you know, the head or cape of a small squirrel or small mammal over it. And then use it just almost just like you would a full size beam and it seems to work pretty good. Now, when you get around the edge, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna find yourself working off the edge this way. Adjust the hide. So you're still working right kind of in the middle of that beam in the sweet spot. And this sure beats, you know, taking scissors and, and removing the tissue you know, little bit by little bit. That, that certainly will get the job done. It just takes a little more time. Um, this one, you know, it's very easy to cut holes in the hide this way. I've done that plenty of times learning the process. I highly recommend if you've got some, you know, the ability or access to some scrap hide to practice on a scrap hide that, that you're not gonna be too concerned about, you know, messing up, putting a big hole in it. Just gonna cut that off there. There we got our leg, kind of up towards the head. I don't know if you could still see that on the video. Um, I'm gonna do my best to get some of that off. Careful not to cut yourself. Adjust my hide here. I'm gonna to try to get this tissue off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch that hide, pull it tight, and work in this direction. And you'll notice you'll get a big, especially if there's a lot of tissue on there, you'll get this big flap of waste tissue if it becomes too much of, a, of an issue, you can just cut that out of the way. Sometimes the weight of that will make, uh, you know, doing, doing the fleshing portion a little bit difficult. So we're just gonna 
continue to flesh this out. I'm cutting into my beam a little bit, which isn't really harming the beam, even though it's got, you've got some little cut marks, but really, more than anything, it's dulling my blade. All right, so I wanna pay attention to the sharpness of the blade. And if that, again, if just I find myself having to put too much pressure to make a cut, then it's time to change that blade out. Here's a leg, I'm gonna stretch this leg. Try and get this tissue off. Ah, see, I cut a hole a little bit too thin there. Not the end of the world. Here, I think because of how many you know how many angles there are on the hide and I can't really lay it down flat on on the beam what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scissors for that detailed work or maybe the ball if I can for right here I can lay this flat and you can see all this tissue that's coming off Here's where you gotta be patient. This is not you know, a super quick and easy job. You wanna make sure you get it all off without creating a whole bunch of cuts that you gotta sew up. If you do make a cut through the hide, we can sew it up, but to the extent that you can avoid doing that, you want to, you don't wanna make more work for yourself. getting to the head. So we got a lot of this stuff that needs to be peeled off. A few spots here in the middle that I kind of missed. Let's go back and get those. getting there still got some work to do but looking a lot better we're down to that blue hide All right, some connective tissue here get this out of the way and then we'll move on to the detail in the face. Okay, so I've removed that old flesh or the, the, the fleshing beam and I went back to the fleshing ball. I also replaced the blade on my scalpel because it was getting a little dull and I felt like it was causing me to cut some holes in the hide that didn't that I didn't need to. So we're gonna get down to some of these detail areas here. So we got a little bit of fleshing to do here. So we wanna make sure that we don't leave any of this tissue on because it will rot on us. And I can come back and cut this 
with the scissors, once I've got it over that edge, it's just sort of hanging on. Cut a little hole there. In fact, I'm gonna take my scissors and remove a lot of this fat. Okay, now we're getting to the lips. So what we've got to do is we've actually got to split these lips. So if you think about it, think about your own, right? Your mouth, you have the outside of your lip and then you have that inside part of your lip and then the muscle in between that controls the lips. So we have to get, we have to turn these lips inside out. So basically we have to get the blade right there to what would be kind of the top of the lip. So here's our nose. Here's the upper lip, so I'm just gonna take my blade, and again, you want a really sharp blade when you do this. All right, so notice we're cutting into that muscle tissue. Then we're gonna lay this lip open. We're gonna fillet it open. Look at all of that muscle that's in there. If we don't expose that, if we don't clean that out, there you can see what would be the top of the lip on the inside. If we don't clean that out, it's gonna rot on us. So we've gotta do that all the way around the mouth. Now, if we were just gonna sew this mouth shut, then we could cut this extra flap of skin off. But for if we're doing a lifelike mount, we may want an open mouth mount or even if we have a closed mouth mount, we want to be able to tuck some of that skin into the form. Otherwise, we've got to build it up with epoxy sculpt. And that, I mean, it's possible to do that, but if we can just use the actual skin and tuck it over and lock it in place, it, it ends up uh, being a lot better final product. And so, uh, I'm just filleting this open. Now in a museum mount, we're gonna sew this mouth shut anyways, but I wanna go, and go ahead and demonstrate um, how to split the lips. So we're gonna keep that extra skin on the inside. We still have to split the lips, even if we're gonna sew the mouth shut, because we still have to get that muscle tissue out. 
we just we could cut that inner inner skin off if we wanted to and we're going to clean it up anyways oops see i cut a hole in it there we're going to clean it up anyways so that it's nice and even and easier to work with now here is the nose kind of open that up there and we got a little bit of cartilage there i'm going to use my scissors to kind of clean that up that cartridge the cartilage and now we got these muscle pads for the whiskers and you can kind of see it moving around there and these can be kind of tricky we don't want the whiskers to fall out but we got to clean that tissue up so what I like doing is just taking it again a sharp blade and just kind of cutting a crosshatch pattern over that muscle pad this is what I do. It's not the only way, it's maybe not even be the best way, but this seems to work for me. And you can see how that, that tissue is starting to come apart now. Now we can clean it out. I'm gonna come back over here on this side and do the same thing. some of this tissue and get that muscle out of there. check the eyelids make sure we got those cleaned out really there's a, a layer of skin there that we need to open up just split that as well because we again if we were doing a lifelike we'd want to tuck that in and around the form so that we have a nice realistic looking eye um, for the museum mount, we're just stuffing these with cotton, so we're not actually going to have a, an eye in there. But we'll go ahead and lay these over anyways. Again, just like with the lips, we're just splitting these eyelids. Uh -oh. So we got these lips split, All right? But now, but we've got some muscle in there, and and there, the skin is thin, but we still got to get that muscle off. And if you know, if it's a larger mammal, there's going to be more, more tissue there to remove. So, but we're going to work through this. Again, this is where really, you know, really sharp knife comes in handy. I'm gonna try the scissor technique. I don't wanna cut my whiskers there. I'm gonna try to thin that down with some scissors. There we go. That's working pretty good. This muscle off. Get some muscle tissue under the chin. It's gotta go. Oop, cut a little hole. A little too much.
I suppose if I was a professional, I'd edit that out so that, you know, I only show my good side, but I'm gonna show you the mistakes too because I still make them. I put little nicks and dings in the hide and uh, you know what, it, don't be afraid of them. I mean, you know, you wanna try to avoid it if at all possible, but they're gonna happen. And that's where, you know, good finishing work comes into play. Stitches that hide it or some epoxy work that will cover it up and, you know, some good paint work. And so we're just about to the point, I think, where I'm going to go wash this hide. And then we'll see. Sometimes washing the hide will, will reveal some areas that you thought were clean that aren't. Here's some tissue that we could thin down a little bit. We also don't want to let this hide get too dry. It's, these feet are starting to get a little dry, so we need to rehydrate it. And we could always just, you know, have a little bowl of water and, and add some water to the hide as we're working. Got a big hole right there along the mouth. I don't want to make that worse. Now, we need to turn these ears too, especially on bigger mammals. We want to turn them inside out because there's a lot of fat and muscle that's hiding in there. Not so bad on these little squirrels, but on a deer, something like that, there is most definitely some tissue that needs to come out. And most, you know, most taxidermists are gonna, when they put the animal back together, they're gonna use either some ear inserts, which are oftentimes these pieces of plastic that will slip inside the ear, or they're gonna use a product like Bondo to, um, they'll squeeze or apply that inside the ear and then shape them the way they want them to look. And that replaces the muscle and the cartilage in the ear. So you've got to turn them inside out in order to do that. But also, I mean, mainly just, not mainly, but you've got to do it in order to get that muscle out. Otherwise that tissue is going to rot. So here we've got a little bit of muscle there. Just clean that off. And I'm just looking around, trying to get any big obvious chunks of meat off before I go give it a bath and see if anything reveals itself. All right, let's go give this a bath. 